Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on an Ambassador 6000. And this one's got a little bit of an unusual problem. The fellow that dropped it in said it's very hard to turn, and I can vouch for that by turning. But I told him as soon as I saw it, this was a drop-off, that the problem prob probably goes away if we remove some line. As you might see, the line on this spool extends past the spool. So it's actually rubbing on the shoulder here, at least that's my belief. And uh, well, he said, if that's the problem, go ahead and take care of that and service the reel since it's been a long time since we've done that. So we're going to take the opportunity to show you how to service an Ambassador 6000. It's a uh, 4.7 to 1 high speed retrieve reel. And uh, he said he's had it out there fishing a lot, but just notice it's been slowing down. Well, again, if this is an issue here where it's slamming into the side plate. I completely understand what that issue is. We're going to just start here do, doing this, trying to take some of that line off to see if we can't rectify the problem right there. Uh, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That's going to enable you to see when I'm posting videos. And, well, you can uh, learn a lot. That's the whole idea here. It's to teach teach you how to do it yourself and I cover a wide variety of reels and topics uh, on the channel. Most of the time it has to do with a fishing reel but we cover various tackle, all types of fishing reels, ocean, uh, freshwater, spinning, bait casting, trolling, everything that pretty much uh, is out there and available. Uh, whatever comes into my shop you're kind of looking over. So if you do uh, uh, decide to subscribe please use the notification button. That will help you to see when I'm posting, what I'm posting, right. and while well, you make a determination as to whether it's something that you would like to see. I have a wide variety of uh, videos in the library. I would encourage you to, to search on youtube.com slash second chance tackle. That's 2ND chance tackle if you want to see the complete listing of all of the videos. And uh, maybe it's got the one that you need to learn more about. <clears throat> well, he really put a lot of extra line on this. And I have to be honest, as soon as I start over in this corner here, I think uh, we've pretty much cleared the shoulder. You can see what I'm talking about. We're finally cleaning, clearing that shoulder for the spool. We're not there quite yet, but we're getting there. So this one really was overloaded with line. <clears throat> There's no question of the drag effect on that in the performance of this reel. So we're going to just, when you load line onto a spool, you should leave a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch below the rim of the spool. And if you are not very good at lining by hand, if you don't have a level line guide, leave even more. Alright, well I think we're pretty much at a point now where we can clip this <coughs> and we can get on with the servicing of this reel. But just to, uh, to take a quick quick look at this, we want to see did it improve the, the turning of this reel. Well, it did, but again, there's, there's more to it than that. So let's let's get underneath this reel. Let's see what's going on. <clears throat> We're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces, and to do that, we'll start. This braid is going to get in the way. This entire video, I just see it. Uh, start by taking off the little retention uh, clip and the handle. And this uh, this reel will be indicative of almost every uh, every Abu ambassador in this series is about. There's three or four basic styles to the ambassadors as they have evolved over time, and even though the exteriors might change. The carriages may be wider or narrower or whatever, but whenever you're at a period in the uh, the ambassadors, they're all pretty much using the same internal gearing kind of design. So just be aware of that. You can use this for multiple ambassadors if you're looking how to service one and you can't find exactly the one that you're looking for. I took the nut cap off. And now we have that little C-clip. That C-clip holds the main gear post 
on the main gear to the bridge. Remove the handle. And when I remove my pieces and parts, I put them into a parts tray. That's so that I can keep track of them and I know where they are when it's time to, to reassemble the reel. If you're uh, if you have a different system for organizing your pieces and parts, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you that this is the only system to use. A lot of people like to, to leave the parts sequentially as they remove them from the reel on maybe on, on the desk or the like. That's not my style, but whatever works for you. All right, there's three kind of what I call thumb screws. They are connecting the inner side to the frame. And you need to remove the gear side plate in order to service the reel. This whole piece should come out now. It does. Now I want to remove the spool. <coughs> And in the back here, I just want to check. I want to make sure it's clean. This one's pretty clean underneath. It kind of surprises me. I want to check the teeth on the idler gear to make sure that all of the teeth are functioning. They are. There's no splits or cracks. You would know that if your line guide was not performing properly, if it kind of buckled to one side or the other or didn't move. And then I want to take the all cover off of the reel. We can see that there's a lot of grease on this, so it's it's been shedding grease, whatever it is that's been happening to this reel. And I'll tap down just to move this pawl a little bit. And I want to remove the pawl because I want to check that. Just being a little stubborn. It has a little slot. You can use a utility knife. You can see on the pole here that both sides of the shoulder here are loaded with old grease, so we want to take care of that. You need to clean those shoulders out. You need to check the points to make sure that they're, they're uniform and clean. And I oil these, and it looks like somebody's before me has decided that grease is a better option. Well, I don't believe that. I think that as it dries, it clogs, and you can see examples of that over here. There's just a ton of the old grease on the corners here. And to me, it's okay if it's new, but uh, as soon as that grease starts to coagulate, it, it starts to impede the operation of that line guide. So I, I always use oils on line guide worms and gears. All right, that's cleaned up pretty nicely now. As I mentioned, I'm going to use oil. I recommend you use fishing reel oil. I want to take the pole now and put the pole into the cavity for the line guide carrier. And then you need to make sure that you can bring that down. So I like to put pressure on that, then go inside and turn the line guide. And eventually you'll see that it pulls it in, which is the way we found it before we remove the pieces and parts. I'll just reattach the pole cover. Get it over to the side where I can grab it with a screwdriver. And just make that last turn for that. There you go. And just once you've tightened it up, make sure it's, it's turning freely. All right, that's kind of the back end side of this. I don't grease. The idler gear, it's a plastic gear, and that plastic gear is kind of self lubricating. Let's clean up the face of that, and then uh, we can move on to servicing the uh, gear side of this reel. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, uh, just leave them in the comment section. I will try to answer those for you. Generally, I try to answer those in the morning. So if you're leaving one in the evening, well, expect an answer the next day. Don't expect that uh, I sit online and monitor, monitor a chat room all day. I don't. There's two screws here that hold the case now, or the side plate, onto the bridge. And we'll probably see a whole bunch of old grease in here. Again, this reel is turning slowly. 
and dried grease is usually a cause for that. <clears throat> well, that's kind of what we're seeing here. It uh, kind of tells a story right here. It's hard to see how that gear is turning when you've got all of this grease, uh, which is hardened, sitting underneath it. This grease is almost like a kind of a taffy. It's really kind of funky stuff. I'm not quite sure what it is. Whatever it is, it's not as effective as it could be or would be or, or could have been. So I'm also going to use a penetrating oil to just help to dissolve that grease there. And that's going to be the story of this entire fishing reel. It's going to be all about cleaning this up now. I'm going to remove this shaft. And here's another puddle of grease. So if there was any question as to why this thing was, was not operating properly, just kind of look here. And again, that's like almost tar. And that will be the cause of why this thing is not working well. Well, I'm going to use the screwdriver here as a scraper to take off as much of this as I can. Next up, I want to just, I'm going to leave the main gear here for now. I want to push down on this assembly, see if I can't get this E-clip out. There's a spring under here. Actually have it. So that's the clip you want to get out. And then you have a spring. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way because if you uh, have any issues with the reassembly, the pictures are going to help you a lot. All right, well, that's going to free this whole thing up here to, uh, to go do some more cleaning on then. One more piece we'll remove is this jack. To do that, you want to remove the spring. I'm going to use the pliers to do that. And now we can pull up on the jack and out. And now we just got the uh, clean up in aisle seven, if you will. We soak that with our penetrating oil and all the other pieces. And then kind of work to put this back together again. I like to work in sub-assemblies. It's a little bit easier for me. A lot of folks want to take everything off like we just did here. When I go to reinstall, I like to reinstall on the sub-assembly itself. So let's keep these together so that we know how that works. I have my pinion gear. Now we have this jack assembly. So this is the 6000. And this is uh, an older version that uses that prong kind of a release mechanism there for the free spool. Then we'll do the same thing over here. Notice on this one, there is a little brass washer that belongs in the bottom. Before I go too much further, let's see if I can't wipe this down from all that old grease. This is what I call a grease choked reel. It's one that's just uh, was serviced a while ago. I'm not sure they used the right grease, but regardless, the grease is dried. It hasn't been serviced in quite some time, and that's caused the issues that we have here. Okay. First step then is to reinstall this, which is the jack. I'm going to just kind of bring that in. And as you saw, the spring attaches to that long fork there. Just like that.
just wanted to make sure it's seated under here. I mentioned that little brass washer that's important that goes on the base. And now let's take our sub assembly with the pinion gear. I'm going to put some fishing reel grease onto the teeth here. And you're going to notice that there's two sides to this. There's a plastic collar here that has flat slotted sides on each. The slotted sides go in. The slot of the mechanism faces in towards the spool. And then this assembly fits over the post. And now we're going to go get that spring. And that little clip. And we're going to reinstall that by pushing down and in. So bring the spring down. Be careful that you don't rocket it out. You want to clear that little groove for this to sit. And I think I can even use my pliers to, to reseat that by pushing it in. I'm going to just release the pressure for a moment here. Set the pliers up. Recompress the spring. I think I have to take the glove off, unfortunately. We'll recompress the spring here, holding tension on the pliers so that I don't lose that clip. Okay, and just finishing up here, just make sure that it sits, and that's how you install that, that top clip then. Next up then, we want to work on the main gear. The main gear is just as grease choked as the rest. You can see that this has the old style, which is the tine or the, the forked anti-reverse. And what we want to do now is remove the collar, the tension washer, and the gear stack to make sure that's all clean and in good condition. So you can see it's obvious on this side, you can take this out, that everything has been jammed up with that old grease. All right, so we've cleaned off the old grease on the anti-reverse anti dog. Clean off the back end where that uh, drag washer is going to sit. The anti-reverse dog is going to sit one side on each of that click ratchet on the back and seat it this way. You can put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft while we're doing that. Bring it down. Center your anti-reverse dog on that stud and that's how you set your gear post. We want to just check the rest of this, clean off the cap washer. Take a look underneath. There should only be one drag in here. I should also have a little drag washer on the side here. So we're in good condition on this side. Clean the teeth on the main gear. I'm going to use a brush for that. You can use a hard brush, you can use a wire brush, you can use a toothbrush. Any of the brushes are good. Just make sure that you get all the old grease which this had from the grooves in the teeth and a nice dose of new grease replacing it. We'll solve that issue. The main gear goes on the shaft now. Check your washer. This is a leather washer. I'm going to just make sure that it gets a little bit of grease on there. And normally I would kind of roll that around with my glove, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to use that paintbrush. Make sure that gets a nice even coat. And reinstall that. 
check this back washer. This washer, for whatever reason, tends to get, well, it's got it here. You can see that there's some raised surfaces coming with that. And when that happens, it's kind of a blistering of the metal finish. So I will take a micro file or a small file and knock those blisters off. It's peeling um, plating at this moment, and that will destroy a, uh, a washer. It'll act like a, uh, well, a rasp for this file. So I'm just going to do what I can and knock that off and make it smooth. And uh, you need to check everything when you go service a reel. Don't just jump from one piece or another. Okay, that's smooth. There's just a little bit more roughness on that one side there. Oh, maybe another burr in there. Okay, good. All right, put that back on now. And we had a tension washer. And we had the thick sleeve, and then we had a thin washer up top. So that is your service of the inside of this reel. This is a bushing on this side. You don't need to do anything there. Your stem of your um, your spool will get lubricated and that'll fix that. Next up, let's put the spool in. And as I was talking about, the stem's getting some grease on them. Let's do that on both sides of this. When you go to install your spool, make sure that the brakes are pushed in. They're going to ride in a race and if they're not in, the, uh, they're going to get trapped in that, or have an opportunity to get trapped in that race, and then your reel won't turn. There we go. And as always, this tag seems to come out, get stuck inside the spool. I don't like working on reels and leaving the, uh, the line on, but we're doing it here. Okay, compress those wings. Come back and bring your case now. Set your case in, line up the sides of the case with those two posts. Make sure that you have the free spool release. Then go into your parts tray and get those two pieces. The spring, uh, the screws that belong on each side. Put those in. So this is one of the earlier designs of the Ambassador from an internal design perspective. Just testing that it releases. They've gone to Quite a different design on the later models, but this is uh, one of the older ones. That's, they're all effective. There's no one that's better. There's ones that are better to service, but there's no one that's really better than the other. Okay, and I just have a little bit of grease on the back end here. There's grease everywhere with that old piece. All right, we can now assemble the um, back plate to the frame. This is the race I was talking about for the brakes. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Line up your pieces. And then tighten these down by finger pressure first. Once you do that, a quarter turn more with a screwdriver just to finish and tighten that up is perfect. Next up, we want to go install our star adjuster. Looks like I've left a washer in there, possibly. All right, this, so on that stack that you were putting back in, there's two washers. I'm just going to leave that on there. We'll put it back in this way. And put it on by hand, tightening, and make sure that it spins nice and easy. If it's not spinning easy, then uh, you want to back it off and reset. You don't want to cross strip that post. 
is attention worship belongs under your handle, then your handle, and now the E clip goes next. That's going to hold everything on. A lot of times you need to remove that E clip first because the handle won't come off. Sometimes, see, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So my practice has always been to remove it first. Now the handle nut cap goes on. Same thing. Make sure that it threads properly. A lot of times I find reels come into my shop with a stripped case. And that's because this one, somebody was trying to, to tighten it on and tighten it on while cross stripping it. Next up is the little clip that holds it firm. You need to align that clip with the hole. This one's got the thin clip so you can make the adjustment with the nut. Just simply by taking your wrench, tightening it up. And then we can put the tie down screw in. Oh, that's a flat blade. Once that's done, tighten up your drag washers again. Make sure that they're holding. And let's give it a test. Well, needless to say, it operates a whole lot smoother. These are nice reels. I like these reels. And test to make sure your drag washer is holding. It is. This one's ready to go fishing again. Nice free and easy turning on your spin for casting. Release works. And that's it. So if you have an Ambassador 6000, one of the earlier versions, and uh, it needs service, you now know how to do that. Uh, just follow these step-by-step -step instructions and it will work. I hope you've enjoyed the video. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. And to everyone, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. I wish you good luck fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a nice day.